Hello, everybody, and it is nice to be with you. Um, I uh, am excited to be here, and I want to thank the uh, engine uh, for putting this together, and thank you, Katie. We had a great visit earlier this year. I guess I would just say, uh, as a former entrepreneur myself and a former tech investor, I think I am uh, particularly focused on the importance of this industry. And as we recover from the pandemic, I want you to know that our team is laser focused on achieving the goal of enhancing America's economic competitiveness. And central to that is our technological progress. Um, if we're gonna build back better, more equitably, if we're going to uh, enhance the competitiveness of US companies and entrepreneurs, then we need to maintain our technological edge. Um, everybody knows the fact is America has the best entrepreneurs, the best universities, the best research centers. We, you know, we grow and attract top talent from all around the world, but we can't take that from, for granted. If we want to remain at the forefront of innovation, we have to prioritize investments in research and development, uh, uh, job training efforts, including digital apprenticeships that make sure we have the talent supply we need, and also investments to make sure that we take the innovations coming out of our colleges and universities and the labs and turn it into products that we make here. A few specific things I will mention. Uh, right now, the Department of Commerce is working very hard to make sure that um, uh, we bring broadband to every single American that is vital in order to um, sustain entrepreneurship and innovation. We're also preparing to invest $10 billion in regional tech hubs. Um, although Silicon Valley, Boston, New York, and a few other places uh, kind of are the hubs of entrepreneurial and tech community, not that's not where all innovation is. That's not where all great entrepreneurs are. So we want to focus these regional tech hubs throughout the country uh, to further stimulate and invest in entrepreneurship and innovation. So, and of course, underpinning everything we do is a value of equity to make sure that the folks who have jobs in the digital economy, who are starting companies, who are investing money, who are getting venture capital, uh, look like all of America, not just a, a small slice of America. So, uh, as I said, as a former entrepreneur uh, and um, an investor, I'm excited to work with all of you and want you to know that I am fully and completely supportive of making investments and moves and strategies that enhance our competitiveness and maintain our technological edge. Can you hear me, Secretary? Okay, wonderful. Thank yes. you so much for being here. I know you have an incredibly packed agenda. Uh, just a few questions for you. So the, for the first time in a generation, it seems that both sides of the aisle have accepted the importance of industrial policy. What is the administration's vision for the U.S. industrial policy? What does it look like? Yeah, so nice to see you, by the way. Um, so I think of it as um, making investments so we can compete. You know, it's, it's not so much about prioritizing one industry over another. Uh, it's about, like I said, you know, working with the private sector, public private coming together to make investments so that we can be competitive uh, with a real focus on technology and innovation. That, you know, that's where America is still the world's leader. The America's entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial ecosystem are the envy of the world. And so, you know, we want to continue to invest in that um, uh, and to do that in a, in a public private sector way. Um, so that means investing in talent, tech talent, digital talent, it means being a leader in artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, making sure that we are setting the global standards uh, for those critical technologies. It means, as I said earlier, uh, kind of democratizing technology and innovation by investing uh, all across the country. It means bringing about universal high-speed affordable broadband to all Americans. 
It means prioritizing um, critical supply chains to your point of industrial planning. Semiconductors are the literal building blocks of the entire modern economy. We need to make, make more in America. And that means our policy and our investments in the federal government need to incentivize semiconductor manufacturing in America and the whole ecosystem that gets built up around that. So uh, I think it's you know no one thing, but it's a real focus on critical and emerging technologies and um, you know making sure that we lead there and have the talent there so we can secure our economic and national security. Wonderful. So next question is, a lot of people at this conference focus on early stage commercial development and the translation of science and engineering from the lab into startups. And there's associated capital gaps with that, but there's an important role for the government in helping these companies scale domestically. What are the tools you've created or are creating to support this kind of innovation and translation into commercialization? Yeah. So first of all, I, I want to say uh, that's what you're doing. You know, <laughs> I had the great pleasure of being at the engine over the summer. It's incredible, incredible what you are doing there. And so our job is to partner with you and, you know, operations like yours all around the country. That work that you're doing is is critical, vital, mission critical to growing our economy, creating jobs, you know, helping the U.S. remain competitive. And so, you know, my my job is to support that, you know, in, in any way that we can. Um, the $10 billion that Congress will, will give to the Commerce Department will be used to invest all around the country um, to create regional tech hubs. You know, Cambridge is kind of a, a, a naturally formed organic tech hub, we want to invest all around America to kind of replicate that success. Uh, we at the Commerce Department operate um, something called the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, and uh, it's working in public-private partnerships with mostly small manufacturers, providing capital, providing technical assistance, with a focus on you know, tech enable leading edge manufacturers just to, to really make sure that um, companies have what they need to be successful. So, you know, I think, look, I, I, having been in the business, the, the right place for risk capital to come is from the private sector. Um, what we can do is more around creating the conditions for success, investing in research and development leaning in big time on job training, digital apprenticeships, et cetera, helping you know, manufacturers and, and all of that ought to um, have a, you know, more vibrant opportunities for you in the private sector. So I know we have only a very short minute, so I'm gonna ask just a last question. So yes, we are privileged to be here in this Cambridge ecosystem. And we try to do as much as we can to share information and share what we're doing. But are there other things that we can do to help, you know, emerging tech hubs or your, your policies around having these different hubs? How can we help? Yeah, thank you. Well, if we could, like, um, replicate you and send you all over the country, that would be a good start if you can work on that cloning technology. Um, look, I would say share what you know. You know, tell your story, get out there, share it with us, share it with governors, share it with mayors, share it with other incubators, you know, go out to middle America and, and help them because, um, you know, they need your know-how. I would say really please lean in on equity. I was in the venture business for, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years. I sat on a dozen corporate boards. I made a lot of investments. I was a general partner in my own firm. I was never with other women, you know, um, which is to say that's if we aren't doing everything we can to develop and unleash the innovation potential of women, people of color, immigrants, people from other from underrepresented communities, then we will not be competitive. We need to tap into the totality 
of America's talent, innovation, and entrepreneurship, not just uh, people from, you know, high socioeconomic classes or white men. And you, I know, are doing that. You're committed to that. But help us um, move forward with innovation in a way that reduces the persistent inequities uh, across America in access to capital and R&D and careers and innovation. Because if we do that, then we will really be competitive with the world um, and, and, and be a stronger, better country ourselves. I want to thank you so much for joining us and for all the work you're doing. And uh, you, you have our support in, in uh, spreading this uh, in many different places and being helpful. So thanks again. Yeah, so sorry my, my time is limited today, but I am a huge admirer of what you're doing and we're on the team to support. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.